with this life. Would you say y'all had altercations leading up to this particular day? More than ten. More than ten, less than twenty. Yes. Okay, so you got more than ten, less than twenty altercations mm -hmm. back and forth mm -hmm. over the phone, physical altercations, mm -hmm. beauty parlor, clubs, restaurants, all of these different places. Well, um, hair salon, hair salon, my home. Mm -hmm. um, she never bothered me while we were in the club. Okay, I, I was just at the hair salon and over the phone and just coming to Could my come home. To okay, so when the incident happened, did it happen at your home? It did. It happened so at she, my home. So I she came to my home. home. Yes, she came to my home. In fact, she drove from Clemson at the time. She was living in Clemson. Mm -hmm. I lived in Greenville. And she drove from Clemson to my home. And what happened when she got to your home? And so that day that she came to my house the last time, um, Anton was there. She came looking for him. Her excuse was she came looking for her car. But you rang the doorbell. You came into my home. We had an altercation. She wouldn't leave. And I ended up throwing red devil eye on her, causing her to be blind and once I threw that on her because I did I forgot that it was there that it was in the cup because it wasn't in the container that it was originally bought in okay um and why did you have the red devil I had it because I had a problem with my garbage disposal okay so I poured the rest out of the canister up into a cup to use for a later date okay so you didn't and use it all when you were initially no, no, was trying to get your no, garbage it, disposal it, fixed actually it was it was very little but I guess I mean I, I didn't realize that it was going to cause that much damage to her okay um I have heard people say and people had told me that, you know, Red Devil Eye would do this and do that and but I didn't I didn't realize the severity that it would cause and when I threw that on her after our altercation because we did fight. Okay. Um we fought that day and you fought right, right before the actual throwing. Yeah. So, so this is happening at your house. In You're in your home. house. In my home. In your home. So she comes and she rings the bell, mm -hmm. and Anton lets her in, opens yes. the door, lets he, her in. He knows he, it's her. He knows he's in her car at your house. Right. And so he lets her in, mm -hmm. and y'all fight in your house inside of my home. I know. And, and what does he do? What does he do? Yes. He left. So he, he doesn't even try to break y'all up. He doesn't even try to break us up. Um, we fought until we stopped fighting. I asked her to leave. We're screaming back and forth. She's ranting and raving. At this point, she's on my front porch. And I'm begging her, leave. You know, I'm going to call the police on you. And... She's ranting and raving, I'm going to do this to you, and I'm going to do that to you. And he's, he's out, standing by her car. And, because I could see when I go to the door. And that's when I go back to my kitchen. I didn't think to get a knife, or I, I, did, I didn't have a gun, because I wasn't trying to kill her. Right. You know, I just wanted her to leave. Right. Because 
I was tired of fighting her. I was tired of being harassed and I thought I throw some hot water on her and that'd be the end so of it. You grab the cup. You you grab this cup. Mm -hmm. But it still has this little wet dye on it. Pour right. I completely forgot it was in there. Okay. I completely forgot that I had porn, poured the the end of the red devil eye up into that cup. Right. But I had all of these chemicals on my canister that I had been using to clean. Mm -hmm. I remember it being some bleach, and I do remember pouring bleach on there. But in the cup. But I so you grab this cup, mm -hmm. you you go to pour like bleach and water because you, yeah, you made yeah. a solution yeah. to, to 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 throw on her, yeah, but, but not, not to, to disfigure her. Like no, obviously that no, happened. No. So, you, but you 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 were creating a concoction to get her to stay away, to stay away and not come back, and not come back. And but so you throw this concoction on her, mm -hmm. and what happened? I heard her scream and I heard her yell and what did that do to you? Oh God. I knew immediately that I messed up. I knew that I messed up and I got my phone and I called the police and I told them what I'd done and I remember going to the door with my um my cartless phone and what bothered me was seeing her trying to find her way to her car. Anton is standing in the yard and he never tried to help her once. Um, he didn't help her. He didn't help her. He didn't help her. And that's all you kept repeating, even when you were telling me earlier, obviously that that moment did something. Yeah, I knew that I had messed up. I knew. Like in that moment when you saw that, first of all, he walked out of the house and yeah. let y'all fight. He, he let her in knowing that that both of y'all emotions were like on a thousand right. that this happened. And then he walks out and lets y'all fight mm -hmm. until y'all tired of fighting each other. Right. But yet there's still anger and, and words being spewed back and forth. You ask her to leave. Obviously she, she does that. And you go make this concoction to, and you throw at her. Right. Not remembering that there's this red devil eye. Right. Not until, until, after, until, the until after the fact. And you realize that something worse happened than what you intended initially. Right. Um, and but even in that, her screams definitely her screams. let you know her screams that you did something terribly wrong. Right. And she then was screaming, and I remember her saying that she couldn't see, and I remember her trying to find her way to her car. But she kept saying, he didn't help her. No. And so at that moment, you realize you made this terrible mistake. Mm -hmm. Y'all in this situation behind a man behind that a wouldn't man. even help. That either wouldn't even one help of either one of us. Her nor me. And that, for years, I didn't understand. Because... You say you love me, you say you love her, and yet you did nothing to help neither one of us. Um, for years, I dealt with the guilt of what I did to her. Um, I took responsibility for my actions. I called the police. I told them what I did. Um, I never minimized what I did. Mm -hmm. I took full responsibility. I. Why do you think your case was so publicized? Um, 
from the beginning, it was publicized. So I can't say that a lot of it had to do with her son becoming a NFL football player because um, right after my trial, I was on Maury Povich. So I can't say, I can't give him and his um, stardom to NFL the, the total credit for that. Um, I, I, I really don't know. And I questioned that for so many years um, to God with prayer and because I just didn't understand. You know, I didn't understand any of it. You know, I didn't, I didn't understand why it had to be me. Why it had to be her. Why it had to be at my hands. Um, but because of the relationship that I have with God. And why not you? Because so many women go through what she and I went through. Whether you admit it or not. Right. Whether you admit it or not, every woman has had a situation, a altercation mm -hmm. with another woman. Yeah. You know? And I regret what I did mm -hmm. from the time I done it. Mm -hmm. And for years I prayed for her for her family, for her children, because she had small kids, yeah. you know, so that I had a small child. Um, Caleb was two years old at the mm -hmm. time, and I think she had four kids, and I remember one of her children coming to her home with me. It was a little girl. Mm -hmm. um, one particular night, they had driven from Florida from a AAU basketball game all the way to my home just to question me about Anton and even then I felt empathy for her mm -hmm. because I knew what she was going through because I had been through it okay. and um, I think it's two victims in this whole story not just her we both were victims um It was just a bad situation for the both of us, for our families, for my child, for her children. And for years I prayed and I prayed because that's all I knew to do. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't do anything else. Right. And um, I re even remember a time where I would pray because I knew that there was anger. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was resentment. I knew that there were there was hate right. for me. And I remember praying and praying and I was like, Lord, I just wish that, you know, you could show her, her family, what I'm going through here as a inmate in prison. And I remember one day they came to They came to lock me up, and I questioned the officer, the CEO, why, and because I know I hadn't done anything. And remember, I said to you that my time was hard; that it was easy, right? Um, because when you have a relationship, God shows you favor. Yes. And I was shown favor on countless occasions and I remember them coming to lock me up and they said Miss Grant your alleged victim's mother is here mm -hmm. and um, they didn't lock me up they put me in my room and they locked the door and they told me not to leave and I guess protocol I should have been
house and mm -hmm. lock up. But right. Favor. Right. I was just locked in my room until one of us was off of the premises. Okay. So she had been incarcerated for? Not her. No. Okay. Not her mom. It was her mother. Okay. It was her mother. And um, she told the story of what happened to staff and inmates and I had a good rapport. I worked in medical and mm -hmm. um, had a good rapport with the nurses. Right. And um, so needless to say, I wasn't locked up. I was locked up in my room until she was off of the premises and I ended up speaking to the major once it was over. <clears throat> Once she was off of the premises, okay, and um, I, I just remember thinking back to prayers that I had prayed just for someone to see what I had been going through. You right. know, right? Um, not that I wanted anybody. To ever go through what I was going through, right? But but, but she was able to see yeah. you behind those walls right. and see um, my day to day life, right? You know, you know, that, you know it wasn't a piece of cake. It, it was, was it, you know, you were paying for your consequence for right. the choice that you made because of the choice I made. Right. And I was paying for it, and so just um, as a woman and understanding <clears throat> the damage that was caused to your victim. And you understand the damage that was caused to your victim. How would you feel if if you were in her situation? Like, do you understand how the anger that she feels towards to you? To a degree. Okay. I understand, but to a degree, I could never understand because it wasn't done to me. Right. It was done to her. Right. So. I can't walk in her shoes right. in her everyday life. Exactly. So I understand the resentment, the hatred. Okay. Um, since I've been home, I've watched interviews where she say she says that she doesn't hate me. Um, I would love to believe that. I would love to believe that, but I don't, um, because I know what I did to her. Mm -hmm. I know what her children went through. Mm -hmm. I know, as a mother, what I went through, having to leave my child. I was absent, but she wasn't, mm -hmm. yet she was. Right. Because she wasn't able to perform day-to-day um, -day duties as a mother. Right. You know? Right. So, I just prayed for God to make things easier for them. Right. You know? As with my own son. Mm -hmm. Because he went through a lot. And I know her kids went through a lot. And it was a lot on both sides. So, after the situation... Was, is he still with her now? Do they still remain together? Um, or do you know? I don't think that they are together. Okay. Um, and I say that because over the years, he has, Anton has reached out to me. Really? Yes. So, so you go through all of this. You, you are incarcerated, charged with assault with intent to kill. You are sentenced to 20 years mm -hmm. behind this man who wouldn't help either one of y'all, and he reached out to you? Yes, he did. Um, several times over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just my own, this is just my own take on the situation. I feel like that he reached out because there was a lot of guilt. Anton did reach out to me several times over the years, and as I said, I feel like it was more so guilt because of a lot of untold truths. Right. And um, 
he just expressed himself that he loved me and he was sorry and um, he said what he said because he was angry at me. And when you say said what he said, you mean at your trial? During my trial. During the trial. So he testified against you? He did testify against me. Um, someone that said they loved me, mm -hmm. that they had my best interests at heart. So he testified against you, but not, not telling the truth. He lied, he lied in his testimony. And what was his reason for lying? Um, a letter that I received from him stated that his reason for lying on me because he was upset. He was mad, in fact, that I left him. And he wrote you this letter, he which wrote, you still have. I still have the letter. Stating that he lied on the stand under oath because you left him and he just didn't want to accept that. Right. Oh, wow. Right. Wow. So, I know this was very hard for you, right? Um, just to talk about this. Um, this is something that's been on your heart for quite some time. Um, you expressed how challenging it has been to constantly hear just the other side of the story. Having people judge you, having your family be harassed, and, and vice versa, just constantly getting into altercations. Mm -hmm. Because people just not being able to hear both sides of the story. Right. At, least, at least when you hear both sides of the story, you can make a proper assessment, even if you feel the same way. Just being able to hear what happened from the other person's point of view is very important. You know, because of all the things that she went through, even before Suprema came in the picture, right. um, dealing in these toxic relationships mm -hmm. and how you allowing certain things that happen, you know, not setting boundaries and standards in the beginning of a relationship, how that can transition to something that you can never imagine happening, right. you know, later on. And I had to learn that the hard way. Yes. And I'm, I'm still learning because of what happened in my life during that time changed me for the better. Um, I'm a different person today. I like to view things from all angles, um, not to be so quick to react. Because once you do a thing, you can't undo it. No, you can't. It's done. Right. It's done. So we have to be mindful of what we do. Um, what we say mm -hmm. because we can't take it back once right. it's done. Right. Women, young girls that's dating get into these relationships and have altercations and fights and ladies, is it really worth it? Is it worth your freedom? Is it worth being away from your child, your children, your family? So I would just say to women, period, just to be mindful of who you allow in your life. Um, everyone doesn't deserve. Yes. <laughs> To be in your space, right. to be have a part of your heart. Right. So we have to be mindful as women, you know, who we give our heart to. Right. You know, and set boundaries. I hear about people arguing about men over Facebook and right, yeah, running up to people's house. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Exactly. You know, it's, yeah. not, it's not worth it. It's not worth your freedom. It's, 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 I can't say it enough. It's just not worth it. Mm. Well, you know? I am so grateful that you wanted to sit down and talk with me to tell not just me, 
but everybody else just how you felt about this whole situation just to hopefully prevent help prevent someone else from going through the same situation just expressing how subtle things can happen how they start off so perfect mm -hmm. so romantic how mm -hmm. you fall in love without even meeting each other mm -hmm. you know it's almost like a fairy tale and sometimes that's our problem right as women we we want this fairy tale life and when it starts off like that and then things begin to happen subtly that changes this fairy tale into a nightmare you still try to hold on to that piece that made it a fairy tale that intimate experience like you hold on to that and make that, you know what I'm saying, the thing that keeps you bound in this situation. Right. And I know quite a few people have reached out to you um, wanting to hear your side of the story. However, you decided to sit down and talk with me. What made you decide to, to talk with me tonight? Um, for years, I said, that I didn't feel the need to tell my side. They had already painted this picture of me. Um, I've already done my time. I've already been found guilty. So none of that matters anymore. What matters is helping someone else another woman, a young girl, mm -hmm. um, not make the same mistake that I made, mm -hmm. to think before you react. Mm -hmm. Because once you react, can't take it you back. can't take it back. Yeah. You can't take it back. I thank you, because that, that took a lot of courage for you to to sit down and have this conversation with me. Um, I know it's very hard for you to do that. And like you know, this is called Law in No Order, Special Survivors Unit. So law is what it is, right? Um, but it is also a metaphor for standards and values. And you talked about um, setting certain standards um, and not doing that caused you to eventually be in, this, be in the situation where you serve 20 years. Right. So what is law for your life today? What standards and values do you allow to guide your life? Today, um, as I rebuild my life, mm -hmm. protecting my peace mm -hmm. at all good. costs. Okay. Okay. All right, and the second part of that is special survivors unit. So what is a survival mechanism for you today? I recognize that in the past, right, um, there were other survival mechanisms that were necessary um, to protect yourself. So today, um, as you rebuild your life, as you're creating this new story for your life, what is the survival mechanism that you use now? Today, um, my biggest one is prayer. Mm -hmm, definitely. Peace and prayer. It's a peace. because I do want to love. Mm -hmm. I want a relationship and in hopes one day to be married and I refuse to let what happened to me um, stop me from having a effective um, healthy relationship. I refuse to let people put me in situation, compromising situations where I am forced to get out of character. Right. Where I am forced to go back to prison. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nobody wants to go back there, okay? I've been trying to tell people, listen, it's done. you can have that. I ain't even trying to argue with you. That's why my there. life is <laughs> over mm -hmm. 
we can't take back time no. that was taken from us. No, we can't. Mm. And we shouldn't give time to undeserving people. That's right. Mm. That was a perfect way to end. Okay. Yeah. Don't give time to undeserving people. All right. And I thank you so thank much you. for this interview. It was a pleasure speaking with you. you and well. I know we're going to speak again because this is not the end. It is All not right. the end. We're going to have a whole lot of girl talk. <laughs> right? Yes. And so I just pray that you have a blessed evening. And we're just on this journey of changing your story. And I just thank you so much for sharing your side of the story. And I really hope that this helps to propel, you know, that next chapter that you're about to write. And I thank you all for another edition of Law and No Order, Special Survivors Unit. You don't want that, no, and I tell you one thing. I see how far this goes, I've been not alone, see. Best it stay that way, you've been on the wrong team. Best you ain't that.